Welcome back, I'm George. And you know that we're out here in the shop again, so we're gonna to have to cover a topic that's gonna to be helpful to everybody. We did a video on evaluating a circuit to make sure that you've got the proper amperage or you're, you're using the proper amount of amperage or you're not overloading that circuit just to make sure you're safe and you're not gonna blow a circuit and that it's, of course, it's gonna be efficient and effective and you're gonna be successful. Now, uh, we're gonna do something that's really, really neat because there's a shortcut to most of this that you can use when you're at the store. So if you're in Home Depot or Lowe's or one of those places where you've got all these elements that laid out and you're looking at them, I'm gonna show you how to figure it out on the spot without going through all that math that we did uh, on one of the other videos. All right, now it all works out the same, but uh, with this you'll understand how to do an entire circuit with everything else that you've got plugged into it. You can figure it all out. Uh, but with this we're gonna do just isolating these. Now, uh, two things, or a couple things you might wanna know about heater elements. Uh, heater elements come in a wide, wide variety. Uh, but the primary two differences are, you're gonna have a high density or you're gonna have a low density. And I guess the question, what's the difference? A high density has less cubic inches surface area. So that means that each cubic inch has to burn a little bit hotter. And a low density has more surface area, the cubic inches of its surface area. So that means each cubic inch can burn a little bit cooler. Uh, but primarily, the difference between the two is absolutely nothing. They both do exactly the same thing. They heat exactly in the same manner. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, matter of fact, the low densities are probably more advantageous uh, for water heaters when you've got like really hard water or something like that. Uh, they don't burn out as quickly as a high density. Okay, so let's get right to it. Well, here we are. Now, and now you remember this hot mess that we went through in your v, uh, WVAR or P. Uh, E-I-R, uh, and that's just the things that we know about electricity, the four basic values we know about electricity. But we're not gonna, we're not gonna go through all of this again. This is what you may be faced with when you come across all those heater elements that you're trying to pick, figure out and you're gonna try to design for your still. And so you'll have 120 volt category and they come in 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000 watt. Uh, you've got the 240 volt that remember you can you can wire these at 120 volts, but what happens is, is the 3000 watt times 0.25, because you lose 75% of the wattage, is really a 750 watt element now. And there's a good reason for that, that you need to know that. The 3500 watt is 875 watts, and you'll see how these break down. And then of course, your third category is the 240 volt, that's 3000, 3500, 4500, 5500 watt, and they come in many, many different uh, variations. But I'm using these as the examples. Now, here's what, we, here's what we know for sure. And you're standing there in front of the, and you've got your little calculator with you, and you're like, oh, I'm looking at all these things. Well, interestingly enough, P divided by E, and remember, we changed those. We changed those letters. So we made them wattage divided by voltage equals amps. So, if you're standing there and you go, okay, I know I got me a 20 amp circuit. Now, what combination, and I wanna use two elements. Now, let's say I wanna use one element. What can I use? I'll say, okay, let me try the 120 volts, uh, 1500 watt element. Now, remember we said the wattage divided by the voltage. 1500 divided by 120 equals 12.5 amps. So this one would be a 12.5 amp on that 20 amp circuit, you know you're safe. Now let's say for instance, you're gonna do, well let's do a 240, because the 240 works the same way. Uh, we'll do the 3500 watt. 3500 divided by 240 equals 14.58 amps. On that 20 amp circuit, you're good. All right, now let's say for instance we wanna do two elements. Well, we wanna pick and choose. We're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna do two elements. I'm gonna do two 1500 watt elements on my 120 volt system. Well, because of the relationship, remember we talked the other one was, the, there was an inverse relationship with resistance. There's a direct relationship with power and wattage. So if we take 1500, we've got two of them, that's 3000. 
we got 3,000 watts now, and we divide that by 120, that equals 25 amps. Uh-oh, we busted. So we're a little bit high. So now we got to figure out what combination can I use? Well, you know what I could actually do, let me try a 1500 and a 3500 wired at 120, which is now 875. Let me try that. So 1500 plus 875 equals, and then divided by 120, that's 19.7 amps. Uh, I am under my 20 amp threshold, but I'm really close. So with this combination of these two elements right here, if I've got a two element system on a 120 volt system, theoretically that's gonna work well, but I'm really, really close. It's like 19.7 amps at max draw. Uh, I'd like to get it a little bit lower. So right now I'm at 19.7 amps. What do I do? Well, let me try another combination. Let me try the 1500 watt and the 3000 watt wired at 120, which is now 750. Love this stuff. 1500 plus 750 equals divided by 120. Now I'm at 18.75 amps. So I've dropped an amp and I feel much safer with that because I've got two elements now on that 120 volt circuit. Now this will work in any combination. Uh, one last one that we'll do real quick. Let's do a 3000 and a 3500 on a 240 volt system and we'll say this one's on a 30 amp breaker. This one's on a 30 amp breaker. That would be 6500 watts and we divide that by 240 volts and we get 27.08 amps. So if we had these two wired together under 240 volts, that would be 27.08 amps. If we're on a 30 amp circuit, we're absolutely safe. So think about that when you're standing in that aisle and you're looking at all of those combinations and you just want to, which one am I going to do? Or you can do the math quickly at home before you even get there. Hey, if you get an opportunity, please leave a comment. We love the comments. We answer them, every one of them that we get. Like us, share us with your friends. Of course, you know all that stuff. Of course, subscribe. Uh, that's not as important as making sure you come back and just pick up little bits and pieces of information to help make you successful. Happy distilling.